Hello everyone, Gregster Reviews here. Today we're doing something slightly different and we're comparing max stable overclocks on the Fury X and the Titan X and all my benching is being done at 1440p or all the comparisons I should say have been done at 1440p. The maximum stable overclock on the Fury X was 1100 and I could also put plus 50 on the memory there before I noticed any artifacting. So 1100 and plus 50 and on the Titan X we had 1419, 1419 megahertz on the core and plus 500 on the memory. Again these clocks are very stable, no crashing out on either system. I have, I tell lies, I had a crash out on the uh, Fury X at 1100 but it only done it the once and that could have been a bug so didn't do it again, we'll leave it at that. I tried a bit higher on the Fury X for 11.20 but that certainly wasn't having any of that. It was uh, crashing out quite a bit there. Hard lockups and computer resetting. So what we want to show today is uh, what the actual stable clocks are and what results and basically is it really worth overclocking. So I'll show you all the results and you can decide for yourself. So let's stop playing Batman and we'll get down to the nitty gritty. Right, so jumping straight into Tomb Raider. On stock it scored 84.6 for the uh, Fury X and overclocked it scored 88.7. So a nice little boost there. And on the TX on stock it scored 102.4, quite a bit over the Fury X. But overclocked it scored 111.4. A bit of a boost there from overclocking but game doesn't need it, runs well on its own anyway. Right, so moving on to the next one we've got Hitman Absolution and with the Fury X at stock it scored 45.7 overclocked it was 49.1 and the TX at stock was 51.4 and overclocked that managed a nice little 55.0 so 55 frames per second there. Okay, Shadow of Mordor up next and with the Fury at stock, the Fury X at stock, it scored 67.2 and overclocked it managed a nice 70.8 good frames there and from the Titan X it scored 75.5 at stock and a big jump to 83 overclocked so a very nice boost there from the from the Titan X with an overclock moving quickly on we've got Sleeping Dogs now and the FX scored 60 at stock, 62.8 overclocked, so 2.8 frames on the overclock. And the Titan X scored 66.7, and with an overclock it scored 72, so roughly 6 frames per second gain there. Sniper Elite V2 now, and a bit of a harsh one on the Fury X. On stock it scored nearly 40, with 35.9 and overclocked it managed 38.3 and meanwhile the Titan X uh, smashed this one up with the 49.2 on stock and 54.7 overclocked so quite a big gap between the two cards there the latest sniper game this time in V3 and the Fury X at stock manages 45.5 and overclocked it gains 2.4 frames and goes 47.9 Meanwhile, the uh, Titan X scores 50.9 and overclocked it scores 54.9. So a little bit closer this time, but still a quite a big win for the uh, Titan X. Batman Arkham Knight now, the much talked about release from Warner Brothers. And the Fury X scores 74 on stock, 78 with an overclock, four frames per second gain there. And the Titan X scores 87 at stock and 93 overclocked, so a 6 frames per second gain there. A bit closer between the Titan X and Fury X, which I'm, I'm sure a few people weren't expecting, but you can see the gains there from overclocking. The last game we have is Thief, and just quickly, it was 68.5 at stock, 71.9 overclocked on the Fury X and Titan X was 72.6 and 78.3 overclocked so a bit closer on Thief 
and that was running DX, not Mandrel by the way. Okay, to summarise, here's a chart of all the results and what they achieved. It's uh, quite an eye opener, all the hard work for little gains at times. 1440p is a little more demanding though, but I had my CPU at 4.625 to make sure there was no chance of uh, CPU bottlenecking. So GPUs were working as best they could the whole time in, in the benchmarks. And it's down to you whether it's really worth it. I personally don't think it is. Not for 1440p. Uh, the Fury X struggled in a couple of the games and overclocking didn't really help. It pushed it a little closer on the averages but it's the lows that are the ones that hit hard. So uh, yeah, you have to decide for yourself if you've got Fury X if it's worth it or not. It's not really the overclocker's dream that was touted at the uh, E3 demonstration by AMD. 50 megahertz over stock is a bit poor in my opinion. If Titan X absolutely murders it, it the actual stock reference uh, Titan X is it boosted 1220 and I'm running 1420 ish. So that's 200 megahertz over the basic standard clocks. That's quite impressive, really. Fury X, I see a lot of people struggling as well, getting over 1100, so it's not just me. It needs some volts. There was no added voltage on the Titan X either, in fairness, that was running on the stock volts. But maybe things will change when the Fury X has voltage. I don't think we're going to see that big of clocks anyway, but it, you never know, it might do. But anyway, these are all my results. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what I could achieve. Uh, save you doing some work. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Jobs are bad banged up in Arkham. I mean, who doesn't want Batman dead? The Nightwing Brat's in town. Whatever else happens tonight, guys, I want you to know this was the best Halloween ever! <laughs> <laughs>